happy new year guys and welcome to my youtube channel my name is jemima this is the second part of this q and a series if you've not seen the part one please go see it i'll put the link up for you with that said let's continue Um, this next person said I should film a day in the life of a clinical student. P.S. I really love your videos. Thank you very, very much. God, I've received a lot of messages, a lot of comments saying that they love my videos. Guys, you have absolutely no idea what these messages mean to me. They are very encouraging. Thank you very much. For this series, I am actually preparing a dedicated series for my life as a clinical student. Of course, there's absolutely no way I'm going to start 400 level without at least filming my first day as a clinical student and my first week as a clinical student. So, of course, I have those videos outlined. It's just that I have a lot of backlog of vlogs that need to be pushed out before I can start uploading my clinical student vlogs. So, once those backlogs are all pushed out, I will certainly start uploading vlogs about my life as a clinical student. So, please sit tight and, of course, you know, I'll definitely always have premium content for you all. Okay, this person is asking, what's the likelihood of getting MBBS with a 2-2 in anatomy? Wow, honestly speaking, except you are going for a private medical school or certain state medical school, to be honest, it's difficult, okay? Most of these universities may tell you that, yes, if you have a 2-2, you can come in. But the truth is, they will always rank it. And for someone with a second class lower, you will always be ranked lower than someone with a first class or someone with a second class upper. So if you have a second class lower in anatomy and you want to read medicine as a second degree, well, <laughs> you would need a lot of luck, you need a lot of grace. For you to get the admission but that's not to say that you will not get it so i would advise that you put in the work just try in your best and it may eventually work out for you so this person is asking how can i pass with distinction as a slow learner wow okay so there are categories of slow learners to be honest there are some slow learners that would study through a material like for example they would take a whole week to study through a material but then when they finish studying that material for the whole week they have grabbed up to 70 percent that is one category of slow learners there's another category of slow learners that will take a whole year to study through a material and they've not grabbed up to 20 percent if you are in that category of slow learners <laughs> you would have to sit up i have to be frank with you you would really have to sit up because there's a lot of work that goes into getting distinction in medical school our medical school system crumbles like they do everything possible for you not to have a distinction so for you to fight the system for you to beat the system you have to sit up i am going to accommodate you as a slow learner but not when you are a slow learner and you take that long to study through a material and you can't grab up to 60 to 70 percent of it you have to sit up honestly i have a video on how to increase your study speed i'll put the link up for you in case you've not seen it i for one used to be a slow learner and i had to sit up there's a lot of things that i did to sit up there's a way you can condition your brain that's a beauty of the human brain it's the way you can condition your brain and force your brain to study through a material quickly so it all depends on whatever works for you okay so if you're a slow learner you have to know what category of slow learner you are and work assiduously i don't know what level you're in if it's okay by you you can let me know what level you're in in the comments box so i'll know what advice to give to you but if you're not yet in preclinical and you're a slow learner please 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 use whatever level you're in right now to work on your study speed you cannot and i repeat you cannot go through the six years of medical school as a slow learner if you don't learn to optimize whatever time that you have there is so much for you to learn in such a short period of time this next question said what motivated you to study medicine wow wow where do i even start from okay i've always 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 wanted to be a medical doctor my motivation okay i remember when my mom was sick she was admitted in the hospital for a very serious illness my stay in that hospital made me to realize how much i wanted to be a doctor i loved the fact that my mom went to the hospital really terribly sick was admitted was taken care of by the doctors the nurses and all medical practitioners and she came out strong stronger than she went into the hospital i just feel like as a medical doctor there's a lot that you can change there's a lot of impacts that you can make you are like the gateway between life and death for someone i love the fact that with the skills that i learned in medical school i can change i love the fact that as a medical doctor you have what it takes to treat an illness you have what it takes to stop someone from dying 
I think that's the highlight of it for me. Seeing people walk into my consulting room, I give them a particular treatment or see them walk into my surgical table and then they get back feeling better. I mean, that's, that's one of the most beautiful things on earth as far as I'm concerned. I just want to have that ability to treat whatever illness it is, depending on whatever specialty I choose to go into. All right, this person is asking, how do I study smart and fast as a slow learner in medical school? Wow, I have a lot of these questions. I've answered this already, but um, I have a dedicated playlist on how to increase your study speed. If you've not seen it, I'll put the link up for you. Okay, this person is asking, where do you see your YouTube channel in five years' time? Wow, what a question. How do I answer this? Okay, hmm. I'm actually not obsessed with numbers. In five years' time, I would like to hit the one million mark. Honestly, that's just what I'm more interested in. I know the subscriber count nice, the view count nice, but I'm more interested in the impact that my channel makes. Okay, so I would love to get to the stage where I have impacted the lives of at least a million medical students by 2027. Fingers crossed. Let's see how it goes. Okay, this person is asking, will there be a discount on your mentorship program? I want you to mentor me but the money. Oh my god guys sorry 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 there is not going to be a discount anytime soon i really don't want to work with crowd i just want a few people that i can work with i'm a very busy person i have a lot of things doing so for now i'm working with one-on-one -on -one mentorship i'm not ready to mentor a group of people so that's why the number of preclinical students i can handle for now is limited and for those who do not know i mentor preclinical students it's not for free though if you're interested check the description box and of course send me a dm on instagram or send me an email okay this person is asking me to film a day in my life i have a truckload of videos on this i have a day in my life on saturday i have a day in my life on sunday i have a day in my life as a preclinical student although what is missing is a day in my life as a clinical student that one is going to be out after i finish pushing out the backlog of vlogs that i have so i will put the link up for you in case you've not seen it yet i have a whole dedicated playlist for that this person is asking why did you sit for jam why didn't you use your first degree to get a direct entry admission into mbbs guys are you seriously thinking i did not try different routes of course the thing is that i just didn't want to put all my eggs in one basket i sat for jam and at the same time i applied for direct entry only that i had limited number of times to apply for direct entry before i got this mbbs admission for those who do not know i graduated from university of calabar in 2015 however my final year project was in 2016. So before my certificate was ready for me to use to apply for anything, it was in 2017 jam. And how many medical schools will accept your direct entry if it's not repaired without an NYSC discharge certificate? So I went for NYSC in 2017, finished NYSC in 2018. So I could only apply for direct entry in 2017 and 2018. And in 2017, I did not get admitted. It was 2018 that I got direct entry admission. However, that admission came in my 100 level second semester after I have paid over 600 to 700,000 naira school fees and accommodation. So there was absolutely no sense in abandoning my O level jam admission just because I wanted to start from 200 levels. I've received millions of questions on this. I believe I've cleared the air enough. Sorry guys, in the course of filming this video is getting to an hour long. I'm going to continue with all the questions next week. Happy New Year. I remain your girl Jemima. Bye.